Welcome to the fourth quarter review from Horizon Investments. My name is John Drozel and I'm joined by Zach Hill, our head of portfolio management. Welcome, Zach. Good to be here, John. So, Zach, let's start with a topic that everybody wants to talk about and all we ever hear about. Let's talk about inflation. And, um, you know, candidly, it's something we've been talking about at the firm for well over a year now. And I guess the way we've characterized it is that there's a mismatch, right? There's a mismatch between tremendous consumer demand and, you know, understandably limited supply. I think that's correct. I mean, you know, inflation has been a huge topic of conversation last year, and we expect it to be a huge topic of conversation this year as well. But there are a couple important things to keep in mind. One, part of the reason we have such inflation in the economy today is that we have really, really strong demand from the consumer. And overall, that's a good thing. But in a situation where you have rolling variants and that type of thing, behavior is not normal. People are spending a lot more money on goods and a lot less on services. Think about the you know, new car or washing machine you buy rather than going on a vacation or something like that. And really when we think about it, it's that supply demand mismatch in the various parts of the economy that's causing the inflation that we've seen. Makes perfect sense. And um, what's interesting is the conversation has transitioned because about 12 months ago, we were all talking about inflation being somewhat transitory. Yet it appears to have become much more persistent. What's your view on that? Yeah, the last 12 months has certainly been humbling in this regard. But really, when we take a step back, we see that the way that consumers are behaving, the way the economy is behaving, quite frankly, is still not normal. And so while we don't think this, the laws of supply and demand have been repealed, it's just going to take longer than we expect to get back to a sort of steady state economy. That's right. Well, look, if, if you're right about this uh, normalizing right over time, we still have an elevated inflation uh, environment. We still have low unemployment. And we also have a strong economy. And so when I think about the dual mandate of the Fed, the predicates are clearly in place for a tightening cycle, which I think we all agree that that's happening. But give us a sense of the magnitude of the tightening cycle. Well, and that's why the Fed is starting to talk about raising interest rates in 2022. So when we think about it, this last year has been incredibly humbling for us and for the Fed as well when you're trying to forecast this recovery. Things have popped up unexpectedly in supply chains and the like. And so, you know, as we see almost four interest rate hikes uh, expected to be delivered in 2022, if anything, we think that actually may be too many. Okay. And what are we thinking? Well, I think we're, we're thinking that the Fed is going to hike interest rates probably two times, maybe three. And then they're going to see how the economy recovers and see how inf the inflationary dynamics play out. Okay. That makes sense. And so, um, you know, as we engage in a tightening cycle, for those of us that have been doing this for a long time, we know what that means. And so the, the, the idea of the Fed taking away the punch bowl um, might mean the party's about to end. Um, do we see it that way for investors? Not at all. So the starting place really matters here. We're starting from a place of incredibly easy monetary policy. And so to us, a few interest rate hikes from here in, in 2022, it's not really the end of the world, John. Okay. Well, that's good news. All right. Well, let's, let's end where we began. Let's talk about inflation again. What are the things that you and the team uh, will be watching uh, for next year to assess whether inflation is persistent? Sure. So there are three main things that we're going to be watching on this front. One is how people are spending their money. Nothing about consumer behavior has been normal throughout this cycle for the last two years. And so as we look forward, a normalization of the spending between goods and services is a really important aspect when you're thinking about the inflationary environment. And the second thing is supply chains. These have been proven a lot more complicated than we and other analysts had expected. And on a related note, we're, we're paying a close attention to policy in China. You know, zero COVID is very, very difficult in this environment, and that has a huge impact on supply chains. So that's something we're watching closely. And lastly, and I think this is probably underappreciated, is the overall level of GDP growth. You know, we've been running well above trend for this last you know, year, maybe year and a half, and that's been difficult for the economy to adjust to, especially when supply has been constrained. And so as we look forward to this year, you know, we expect GDP growth to slow a little bit, and that in and of itself may go a long way to lowering inflationary pressures. Okay, that, that's very helpful, Zach. Um, look, I'd like to thank you and the team for a, a terrific 2021, and uh, I look forward to navigating 2022 with you. We do as well. Thank you, John. Thank you. On behalf of all of us at Horizon, thank you for joining us. We want you to know that we're grateful for your partnership. Relationships with financial advisors like yourself are priceless to us. Please feel free to contact us, visit us at our website. We look forward to engaging with you.